Okay, welcome to this uh, afternoon session in which there are two great talks. And the first one is uh, recognizing even cycle and even cut matroids. Uh, and uh, this is a uh, joint work between Bertrand Ganan and Cheolwun Keo, I hope I said it right. And Cheolwun will, will speak. Uh, 25 minutes, uh, including uh, uh, questions uh, and uh, answers. Please go ahead. All right, so uh, I, I should say that it's 25 minutes excluding Q&A. Uh, sorry, Michaela. Uh, excluding, and... it was a, including the previous session. It's excluding. Uh, excluding, uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so Chowan and Beltran have uh, pre-recorded their uh, their lecture, and I'm gonna play the recording from uh, my laptop. If there are any questions, please ask it in the chat box. Both Chowan and Beltran are available to answer your questions. Thank you. My name is Bertrand Guenin, and together with my co-author, we're going to show you how to recognize two important classes of binary matrix. So you're given a binary matrix M by its 0, 1 matrix representation, which means that the dependent set in the matrix correspond to dependent set of columns over the two element field. And in the size of that 0, 1 matrix, you want to check in polynomial time if your matrix is a so-called even cycle matrix. So we'll give an algorithm for that. And we want to do the same thing, but now you want to check if M is an even cut matrix. So we'll need to tell you what even cycle and even cut matrix are. So we first start with the notion of a sine graph. So a sine graph is a pair G sigma, where G is a graph and sigma is a subset of the edges called the signature. And then we're going to say that the cycle of G is even if it contains an even number of edges in the signature. And by a cycle, we mean a Neulerian subgraph. So here is an example. We have a sine graph G sigma, where the red edges correspond to the edges in the signature. And if I look at the highlighted yellow edges, it corresponds to an even cycle. And here, if I look at the union of two yellow triangles, then again, that corresponds to an even cycle. And now, a matroid M is an even cycle matroid if its circuits are the minimal non-empty even cycle of some sine graph. So to illustrate this, let's look at the final matroid. We claim that the final matroid is an even cycle matroid. The final matroid has seven elements, and we have a sine graph with seven edges, and that particular signature there. And now we look at all the circuits of the final. So those are lines and complements of line. So if I look at the line one, two, three, it corresponds to the following even cycle. And if I look at the complement of that line, namely four, five, six, seven, then it corresponds to that even cycle. So even cycle matroids are examples of binary matroid, and they are generalization of graphic matroids. Even cut matroids is what you get from even cycle matroid by replacing cycle with cut, uh, and they are generalization of co-graphic matroid, and they are also binary matrix. So for today's talk, we'll focus on even cycle matrix. So as a warm-up, let's look at how we can recognize graphic matrix. So remember, a matrix M is graphic if its circuits are the minimal non-empty cycles of some graph G. And we're going to write that M is cycle G, and we say that G is the graph representation of the matroid M. And you have the following classical result that says that three connected graphic matroids 
have a unique graph representation, and matrix connectivity generalized vertex connectivity in graph, in particular, three connected graphic matrix correspond to three connected graph representations. So consider a graph G and consider the graphic matroid with representation G. You can define minor operation on a graph, so contractions and deletion, or you can do the minor operation on a matroid. And uh, these operations commute. So you have the following little diagram here, right? Where on the left, we do uh, graph minor operations, and on the right, we do matroid minor operation, and uh, we get the minor H of the graph G, we get the minor N of the matroid M, and we're going to say that H, the graph H, which is a representation of N, extends to a representation of the big matroid M. And we can use this idea to recognize if a three-connected binary matroid is graphic or not. So first we use Tut wilson worlds theorem to construct a sequence of three-connected matroid where the M, uh, uh, original matroid M is denoted by M1 and MK is just the uh, graphic matroid uh, where the corresponding graph is a wheel, and consecutive matroids are obtained by doing a single contraction and or single deletion. So we have a graphical representation for MK, namely the graph which corresponds to the wheel of the appropriate size. And then we can try to look at how to get a representation for MK minus one. We just go from MK to MK minus one by on deleting or on contracting a single element. So it's easy to check whether the representation GK extends to a representation GK minus one of MK minus one. And we keep on doing that. Uh, and at the end, we just check whether GK extends to a representation of the original matrix M. If it does, of course, M is graphic and otherwise it is not. No, this is going to be polynomial because at every step we just keep track of a single graph representation. So let us try to generalize this to even cycle matroid. Uh, so remember, M is an even cycle matroid if its circuits are the minimal non empty even cycle of a sine graph. So we'll say that M is equal to E cycle of G sigma and G sigma is the sine graph representation of M. So we went from graphs to sine graph when we went from graphic matrix to even cycle matrix. Now we need to define the notion of minor of a sine graph, and there will be three operations. The first operation is deletion, so you remove an edge. The second operation is contracting, but you're only contracting edges which are not in signature. And the third operation is resigning, where you replace the signature with the symmetric difference of the signature and a cut. So let's just illustrate this. Deletion, we deleted E. Resigning on cut, so we flipped odd and even for every edge on the cut. And then finally, contracting the edge F. And just as for graphic matroids, we have the following nice commuting property. Namely, that if you start with a sine graph and you look at the corresponding even cycle matroid, you can do minor operation on the sine graph or you can do minor operation on the even cycle matroid and you get the same result. And so just as for graphs, we can represent this in the following diagram. So on the left, we have sine graph minors with H gamma being a minor of G sigma. And on the right, we have matroid minor where N is a minor of M. And then we're going to say that the sine graph representation H gamma of N extend to 
the big matroid M. So suppose that I want to now recognize if a free connected binary matroid is an even cycle matroid. So again, by the Wilson World Theorem, we get that sequence of matroid where consecutive matroids are obtained by single element or single contraction. Uh, and the original matroid M is denoted by M1, and MK is the graphic matroid of a wheel. So first you find the set of all sine graph representation of the wheel, there may be more than one. And then you say, well, I get MK minus one by MK by on deleting or on contracting, so I can try to compute the set of all sine graph representations of MK minus one from the set SK, right, the set of representation of MK. And you keep on doing that until you compute the set of all sine graph representation of M1. And then if that final set S1 is non-empty, then by definition you are an even cycle matrix, otherwise you're not. The problem with this algorithm is that it is not polynomial because the sets SI that you get uh, can be exponentially large. Right, so we have too many representation for uh, even cycle matrix as sine graph in general. And uh, well, one reason this comes up is that it's easy to construct new representation from old representation. So you can, for instance, do what is known as a flip, where you rearrange uh, what happens along two separations. And another operation that allows you to construct new representation from all representation is resign. We're going to say that two representations are equivalent if you can go from one to the other by doing a sequence of flips and resign. Now we can essentially deal with a set of equivalent representation as a single representation. So equivalent representations are not really an issue for us. However, we in fact have too many inequivalent representation. And here's an example. So this is the so-called donut example. Uh, so the green parts on the left and the right are sort of arbitrary graph, and they're the same on the left and on the right, except that on the right we flip the sort of bottom uh, and top slices. Right. The odd edges are indicated in red, so they're all incident to a pair of vertices. Now it's not hard to check that those two uh, uh, graphs have the same set of even cycle. In other words, they are a pair of inequivalent representation of the same underlying even cycle matrix there. And in fact, you can construct, uh, if you start from a donor with a large number of slices, exponentially many different inequivalent representations. So we need to handle this class of bad examples named pinch graphic matroids. An even cycle matroid is pinch graphic matroid if it has a representation with a blocking pair. So what is a blocking pair? A blocking pair is a pair of vertices such that every edge in the signature is incident with at least one of them. In the previous example, red edges represent the signature sigma, and you can see that these edges are incident with either A or B. So the set A and B is a blocking pair, and this signed graph represents a pinch graphic matroid. So pinch graphic matroids may have exponentially many representations of two equivalents. And our next question will be, are these the only bad examples? The answer is yes. In fact, we proved a stronger theorem. What we proved is that every even cycle matroid that is not pinch graphic has a constant number of representations of two equivalents. It is first proved by Gannon, Pivotal, and Wallon in 2016 for three connected matroids. And then we generalize it with our connectivity. 
The constant C here in the theorem depends on the result from the Matrix Minor project by Gillen, Gerard, and Wittel. They proved that for every minor closed class of binary matrix, there are only a finite number of excluded minors. By using this our theorem, we can divide the problem into two steps. First, we construct an algorithm to recognize pinch graphic matrices to handle the bad examples. And then, we use this algorithm to recognize even cycle matrices. Let me explain the second algorithm first. For the second algorithm, we assume that we have a polynomial time algorithm to recognize pinch graphic matrix. The input is a binary matrix with a binary representation, and the output is yes if it is an even cycle matrix, otherwise no. First, we test if it is pinch graphic. If it is pinch graphic, then the answer is yes because Every pinch graphic matrix is an even cycle matrix. Otherwise, we repeat to delete or const contract an edge to get a sequence of non pinch graphic matrix until it is minimally non pinch graphic. By the matrix minor project, it has a fixed size and we can find its every representation of the equivalence in constant time. The next step is very similar to the graphic case. We extend each representation step by step, and the original matrix M is an e uh, even cycle matrix if and only if we can keep extended representations up to M. The running time is polynomial because the previous theorem implies that in each iterations, there are only a constant number of representations. Now, how can you recognize pinch graphic matrix? We have two steps. First, we reduce the problem for highly connected matrix, and then recognize if they are pinch graphic or not. Here, what I mean by highly connected is almost full connectivity. A matrix is almost full connected if it is three connected and for every three separations, at least one side has at most six edges. In the proof, sometimes we need different constants here uh, instead of six, but let me abuse the terminology and just say almost four connected to make it simpler. For more details of the first algorithm, the input is almost four connected matrix and the output is yes if M is pinch graphic and no otherwise. For the second algorithm, input is a binary matrix M with a binary representation, and we have three outcomes. Yes, it is pinch graphic. No, it is not pinch graphic. Or we give a smaller matrix N that is almost full connected, such that N is pinch graphic if and only if M is pinch graphic. For the rest of the talk, I will explain these two algorithms. The first case is when the input matrix is almost full connected. Why almost full connectivity matters? Let me recall the bad examples. We saw that if we increase the number of pieces, then the number of inequivalent representations increase exponentially. However, if there are many pieces enough, then we can find the three separation where each side is large enough. So this matrix is not almost full connected. Thus, the connectivity kills the bad examples. Then how many representations pinch graphic matrix can have when it is almost full connected? We proved that if a pinch graphic matrix is almost full connected, it has a polynomial number of representations with a blocking pair. By using this theorem, we can construct a similar algorithm, except now we only keep the representations with a blocking pair. So the input is an almost four-connected matrix with a binary representation, 
and output is yes if it is pink graphic and no otherwise. First, we may assume M is not graphic. Then, we construct a sequence of almost four connected matroids from M1 to Mk, where Mk is a minimally non-graphic matroid. Here, we use two split theorems. One is by Gillian and Joe for almost four connected matroids. The other is by Seymour for three connected matroids. Then we construct a set of every representation with a blocking pair of mk and keep extend each representation to m1. But here we only keep the representations with a blocking pair. The input matroid is pinch graphic if and only if there is at least one representation of m1 with a blocking pair. The algorithm is polynomial because the size of each SI is polynomial by the previous theorem. What if it is not almost fault connected? Then there must be a small separation. First, we may assume that the matroid is connected because one separations are easy to handle. Suppose M has a two separation, then we can express M as a two-sum of two matrices. So what is two-sum? It is similar to two-sum of graphs. For graphs, we identify an edge from two graphs, then delete the identified edge. Suppose that M is two-sum of M1 and M2, where M2 is graphic. Then we have a nice result that M is pinch graphic if and only if M1 is pinch graphic. So instead of recognizing if M is pinch graphic, we can reduce the problem into recognizing if a smaller matroid M1 is pinch graphic. Uh, in this case, we say that the two separation is reducible. For the three separation where each side has N is four edges, we can uh, similarly consider a threesome of matroids. So now we identify a triangle of two matroids and delete the identified one. We have the same result that is, if M is a threesome of two matroids M1 and M2, where M2 is graphic, then M is pinch graphic if and only if M1 is pinch graphic. Similarly, we say that this third separation is reducible. Now, let me sketch how to construct this algorithm briefly. First, we may assume M is connected. Um, if M is not three connected, then there is a two separation. But we don't need to worry about two separations because every two separations are reducible. So we may assume M is three connected. If we have a similar result for three separations, then it will be nice, but however, not every three separations are reducible. Actually, there is a lot of work to handle three separations uh, to get the result, but I'm not going to describe the details in this talk. Um, let me stop here. Thank you for listening. Okay, but is uh, Michele around? All right, I guess it's it, 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 um, I want to unmute everybody, but it's only mute. Uh, okay. People should. Uh, they should be unmuted, right? No, you cannot unmute people. People can unmute themselves. You, you can just tell them to unmute. Uh, can you please unmute yourself and applaud the speakers and the research? Uh,
I see that lots of que that the questions that were asked were answered already by the authors. Um, I have a question. Do you uh, so you rely on this uh, Gerard Gillen uh, uh, Jeff uh, Whittle uh, result? Do you need the, the explicit so that tells you that you have a finite number of forbidden uh, minimal? minors do you need yes. to know them in your algorithm or not you just no. need to know that they are finite yeah we just need to know that they are finite for the analysis actually and we don't need for even cycle even cut matrix this list is not known no actually no. Uh, in fact it's uh, probably very hard to get it it's very hard to get it right yeah, yeah it is already Go on. <laughs> I, I think that there were some uh, experiments to try to find uh, a partial list uh, by Gordon Royal, and I think there are literally hundreds of them of excluded minors. So it's a, it's a complicated class. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is that the, the algorithm doesn't care what the constant C is. Because you, you, you know that there's a constant for the number of uh, um, uh, excluded minors, but uh, you, I don't think the constant is known for any fixed class. So you couldn't rely on it. Uh, but the algorithm doesn't care. Excuse me, in what sense it does not care? It needs uh, that this constant exists, but it doesn't care about the size. Yeah, so, so if the constant turned out to be you know 20, uh, or the constant turned out to be uh, 2,000. I don't need to know that in advance. It's not like I need to enumerate everything up to you know, uh, something of that particular uh, constant size. I'm just going to run the algorithm and, uh, uh, until I find something which is minimally non-pinch uh, graphic. And, uh, and, and, and then I'll just, I'm just going to enumerate everything uh, for the representation there. I don't need to know in advance what that constant is. Um. One bad news is that uh, Andras Shebo has raised his hand, so maybe he wants to talk. <laughs> so, uh, well, you can tell afterwards whether it's a bad news or not. No, I tell it in advance. <laughs> um, even cycle matri matrides are closely related to binary clutters, to some binary clutters for which uh, important algorithmic problems are open. For instance, the uh, odd T-joint clutters, uh, does uh, your result change the complexity of, of this problem? So does it help for solving, uh, uh, for minimizing the, um, the odd joint clutter C? For minimizing uh, even a graph and the T, uh, an odd T join, an odd T join. An odd parity T join you want to find. Odd parity T join, yes. Which is the, uh, the lift of your, of your binary matroid. So the down space of this uh, clutter is, is uh, an, an even cycle matroid, right? Yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure it would, it would help. The, the problem is that you have lots of representation. So if you had one representation that has a loop, your even cycle turns into an odd cycle. Uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not sure. We can think of it uh, offline afterwards. But yeah. I, I, I'm not sure. uh, 